This is the Kawasaki Eliminator. Oh God, it feels tiny. <laughs> and very quiet. Okay, first point is I need to tighten that up. And that. Okay, so both the uh, switch is a little bit on the loose side there. Oh, and the clutch is so light it's almost non-existent. Um, this isn't going to be a review, it's just a quick riding impressions a Kawasaki Eliminator because the team gave it such a nice right up. So in front of me we've got a, a round circular clock, digital displays otherwise, revs on the outside, speed in the middle, all very standard. Woo! <laughs> Tips over very quickly compared to my BSA, which I'm not surprised it's a very it felt tiny. Certainly not as much in the way of go. I'm not sure what speed I'm going. Mirrors are reasonable. I can see most of myself. I dare say the bit of adjustment would be better. Uh, this is the SE version, I think, which has got uh, the cowl in front of you, which is nice, and the uh, power takeoff, which, like a lot of these things, is fairly ugly. And this is a nice, twisty little road. Oh, yeah, you've got to get the revs up to five, six thousand. But then I'm in six, you know. It's a ride, there's nothing uh, weird about it. So, yeah, we're not doing anything fancy. Yeah, small grips, mirrors around. We've got the black, the matte black. In America, they've got some fantastic colour schemes, and we've only got black in this country. I think there's a gloss black and a matte black. So, there it is. It's a little well mannered bike. Bars are skinny. I think there is a clock here. Yeah. Of warning lights around the outside. There is no mode buttons on the handlebar and vibrations at normal sort of speeds are fairly minimal. Suspension feels pretty hard actually. No adjustability on levers either of them. Gear peg is quite tucked in and foot pegs are directly on the brakes. Got plenty of go and I'll try and do a considered test of the brakes. It's third now pulling away 18, 19, 20 miles an hour. Maybe it lacks a little in the character of the engine department. It's very, very quiet, as they all are these days. Water cooled, of course. Make an ideal commuter stroke weekend bike and uh, display is fairly old school by today's standards. You know, there's no uh, colour TFTs here but it's more than adequate and it gives you all the information. There is a fuel gauge. I don't know what the uh, consumption is. Is it possible to get that up? It says 67. Okay. Range 150 miles and distance 103 in the moment. So, yes. A very new bike, but it doesn't feel tight. It feels quite smooth. It's tractable. There is no great surge of torque, but uh, as you move up the road range, it does start to display some urgency, but hopefully we'll get to try that on one of the dual carriageways. We'll do a walk round, quick summary, and that will be a lot me handsome, I think, for today. And if we like this bike, we might try and persuade Kawasaki to let me have it a bit longer. What do you think? It does turn in very easily, much more easily in my BSA. It feels slow in comparison to turn in, it uh, doesn't quite have the reassuring thump of torque. That's it, ideal commuter stroke weekend bike controls are very direct. And for me, at five foot four, I can paddle it along, which I can't do with my BSA. If we scope for a bit of modification, a few little doodars to make it yours. Let's see if we can get a bit of acceleration from 30 and 4th. Yeah. Come 6 or 7k, definitely a sense of urgency, willingness. Below that, it's a fairly linear progression, let's just say that. There's no thump of torque, but there's no um, sort of peaky power band like the old two strokes. So mixed. Urban, semi-urban, semi-rural, 
great bike to be in, probably not a bike for long distance cruising at 67 miles per gallon as a guesstimation I think you're good for at least 150 miles from a tank which means even for long journeys you're probably only doing one fill up gears are quite closely spaced there's gaiters on this version at the front we'll check what preload we're on yeah fourth at around 30 is uh, pretty much a reasonable compromise you're at about 3k revs um, and there's enough to pick up fairly immediately without uh, screaming the engine too much. Just needs a tiny whiff of throttle to set off, not too much. Right, let's do the walk around here. More stable than my BSA. Right, let's turn engine off. Well, how's it to get it into neutral? There we are. There's your neutral. I guess high beam comes on there. Indicator there, left and right, that's good. And there's various buttons. <laughs> Alright, side stand. Dead easy. Okay, so Kawasaki Eliminator 500 SE. Got the LED lights at the back and front. Big old can of an exhaust chain drive. 471cc twin engine, water cooled. Cat at the bottom, relatively unobtrusive. Mid control, single disc at the front. That feels as though it's got plenty of grab. Little cowl LEDs at the front. Side stand very easy to get to, radiator pretty unobtrusive. It's in black, which is uh, I like black, or oh, it's charcoal grey and black, isn't it? Um, right, let's do instruments. Start up procedure comes on like that. So, an exhaust note check. This will not be very exciting. Yeah, you've got rear pegs, you've got the seat rest of the back, removable, you could put on a backrest and other things. And it all looks pretty well finished. But yes, somebody hasn't tightened this up properly. Some adjustment of the mirrors might be a good idea. There's the headlight, very bright. It's a fact. That looks good. Everything is accessible, not too much intrusive plumbing. Right, let's get back on her and do a little bit more riding. I'll take a couple of photos. I could see if I can get a little bit more urge out of this in a slightly less restricted part. Yeah, it feels like a tiny bike. And although I'm not really flat footing it, bear in mind, I'm only five foot four. I've got short Scottish legs. Almost anybody be able to ride this bike with no issues whatsoever. Might be a bit cramped for the taller amongst you. Clutch is super light, super, super light. Here we go. So yeah, again, that clutch bike point. And she's very turnable. Yeah, front disc plenty progressive. Not up to sports bike levels of grab. It turns in well over this very bumpy roundabout. Fourth, fifth, six, six, seven k revs, and also you can still be in fifth at twenty five. Heels over well, but really you need to go down to fourth. So in terms of. The engine, it's very flexible and willing in pretty much all gears. We're in fourth and we're doing 20 odd miles an hour. This, it seems to me, is the gear that you want to be in for best acceleration. But yeah, we're trickling along at just over 20 and no problem in fourth, but it responds nicely. You probably don't want to be in six until you're around about 40 the earliest yeah plenty of pickup 49 50 miles an hour indicated in fifth looked at the suspension we're on the second highest setting so that probably explains why the front the rear feels a bit harsh 
I want to come down a couple of settings on that. But it looks these little bends. Hopefully I can do that one on the way back as well. Turns in nicely once you get used to it. Tracks well. As I said, rear suspension needs a bit of adjustment for me. So for spirited riding, you can take it as far as 10k revs. I'll see if I can uh, find a section where I can at least do that very easily. Nip out into little spaces that you couldn't get a car. Many a lean angle to aim at. And Mr. Lorry Driver is going to... He did stop though. Some lorry drivers don't. And we're knotted behind him. And there's plenty of go at around 7k revs. It does have a tinge of that sports bikeness about it when you get on the revs. It's obviously not a sports bike. And uh, it was a 400 which they bored out, so the idea is more torque. Let's just slow it down a little bit. And into third. And see what happens. Yeah, eight, nine K revs. Plenty of fun to be had without really exceeding the speed limit. And brakes are adequate. Plenty of feel for me. ABS of course, no traction control I don't think, but yeah, beautifully stable. So you can get down to literally one or two miles an hour without having to feel like you've got to put your feet down or out. Mirrors could be better, I could just need a longer stalk really. More bar ends I suppose, that would look cool, especially the ones which hang below, I don't know how good they'd be. But yeah, a few little things like that just to individualise it a little bit. I would like to see some of the American paint schemes. You can go plenty fast enough on these kind of roads. Have fun, fun, fun. But if you ever catch this road when it's not busy, it is a pleasant ride. Instrument illuminates when the lighting level gets low. That's pleasant. Yeah, so all the basics, no fluff. It doesn't look like we've used any fuel at all, really. I think it would have been nice to have had a mode button on the bars just to flick between the various different settings because reaching forward is not the very bestest. Still averaging 67.4. The total miles 130. So in a 13 to 15 mile ride, what are my impressions? It's a good, neat little bike requires a little bit of something to make it stand out but at the same time it's a bit of street sleeper isn't it because it's like a naked bike you know a standard riding position mid mid foot pegs it's fairly easy to fit through get through corners in quite a spirited way but the moderate power levels doesn't allow you to do anything too stupid although stupid people can always do stupid things gear change is light and easy clutch is very light do need a tiny whiff of throttle to make sure you don't stall but that's soon learnt uh, you know I think I'd want adjustable levers just just for the comfort sake of it grips yeah maybe something a bit nicer who knows heated grips definitely this is the UK so we are nearly back at base. Thanks so much for watching this. I've been Andy or Captain Clumsy from Cornish Motorcycle Diaries. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, initial riding impressions. Not a review by any means, but give you a flavour of this little bike. Give it a try, why don't you? And where are we going next? Let's go to Berrien. And we're going to go via the ferry.